Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston. <coughs> Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life. Hold on a second. Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from My Demanding Dog. He needed to go out into the yard, back from the yard, into the house. He needed his water dish inside filled, then he came out and pointed out his outdoor dish needed filled. And I think now he's taking a nap. We'll see how that goes. And and I did take him, try to take him for a walk before this all started, but he made a U-turn and came back. <laughs> we can all be demanding at times and also things that we have planned don't always work out. And it's one of the reasons I'm here today to talk to you about the Secular Franciscan Wake Service. What you say? Yes, there's actually a Secular Franciscan Wake Service and it's called for sort of in the rule. If you go to number 24, if you have the little red book, the 2017 edition, it's page 37. To foster communion among members, the council should organize regular and frequent meetings of the community as well as meetings with other Franciscan groups, especially with youth groups. It should adopt appropriate means for growth in Franciscan and ecclesial life and encourage everyone to a life of fraternity. This communion continues with deceased brothers and sisters through prayer for them. Now, one way we do this is in the newsletter every month, I have a list of the dead from our fraternity and not everyone had, was actually members of our fraternity, but secular Franciscans who became our brothers and sisters at least over time. And so we are asked to pray for them every month. So every month I put that list in. We haven't really developed that thought or I haven't developed that into a habit. And I need to look at that at another date. But for today, we're gonna to talk about the wake service. And you would think that the wake service would be in the ritual of the secular Franciscan order. It is not in here. It's not in here, but this is going to be useful. So we're gonna come back to this a little bit later. Where you will find it is in the Little Secular Franciscan Companion. Now this book has several different covers, so don't panic. This is by Habig, by um, a friar minor, Marion Habig, and it was published by Franciscan Media. This was the 2010 edition. So the 2010 edition has the brown cover, but I think people have yellow ones in all different colors. Now this is both good and bad. Let me see if I can find here. We're skipping around in the book. Here it is. Mo a model wake service for secular Franciscans, page 179. Okay. Sorry, I have various post-it notes in here. Take it out of now. <laughs> and that's literally what it says, a model wake service for secular Franciscans. So this there isn't an official ritual that's why it's not in here but here is a model of one that you can do people do this either during the viewing or bef right before the funeral either one is acceptable and it does start out with an introduction welcome my sister death and those are the words of saint francis as given to us by second chilano 217 so it, you can see this has the citations in it and it talks a little bit about franciscans and Francis's relationship with Sister Death. And it tells you, as the Franciscan fraternity gathers to pray for its departed member, it seeks also to support one another in the faith in which it shares. In this way, the fraternity expresses its sorrow at the parting which death has occasioned and its joyful and confident hope of ultimate reunion with the deceased member and with the Lord. The wake service is a unique way for the community to console one another at the time of loss and to honor the memory of the one who now enjoys and shares in the triumph over death, which has been won by the Lord. Sorry, I just realized that's been abbreviated out of some of the ones I will show you later. Interesting. Again, this is a model wake service. I have a couple examples I'm going to show you. That's why I just realized as I'm reading it that that's different. The wake service takes the form of a service of the word. Members of the fraternity gather in the funeral home at a convenient time, led by the president in prayer for the deceased. Other ministers include a reader and a leader of song. When the fraternity has gathered, the president begins. Okay, that part is out of the model one that I've been given, and so I added back in a description of what it was. 
whoopsies okay i'm gonna change that all up go back and look at that again now you noticed i said president several times in here it says president that's why I think this is an older book at this point, even though it was just 2010. We now use the word minister for the leader of our local fraternity. He's also the term for the local of the regional, whatever. We call that person a minister because that word means servant and we believe in servant leadership. So we call that person a minister, even though we elect them. It's a little confusing, I know. But I think people looking at this um, where it's confusing is it says other ministers. It means like other servants, other servant leaders, but then we're going to say minister right away. So it's a little confusing and you will see there's a plus sign there. That's also a little bit awkward, um, it, but it means to make the sign of the cross. Now, you know, normally in our breviary, we've talked about that. That looks a little bit more like a crusader's cross. Um, so I may have to go back in mind and figure out what I would put there because I don't I don't think I put that in mind. Let me go over and see. No, I don't have that symbol in mind. So I probably want to go back and put that symbol in. I didn't even notice it if it was there. And you'll see there's lots of places where it says our brother, sister, and do you see that over here? So our regional minister has actually made this into an editable document. He has it as a PDF. If you go to the Secular Franciscan website for the St. Margaret of Cortona region, and I'll put that link in the description, there is a sample of this there. It is a PDF. Why it's a PDF is because you can type in once, if you, if you have the ability to edit PDFs, I think you do, um, it's put a little block in there and if you edit that block once, it should edit it the whole way through the document. And you would put in that person's name instead of the blank or the N or, you know, insert name here spot. So it's going to take care of all those. I don't think it takes care of the brother slash sister, which appears again in forms like he slash she and him slash her. Um, if the minister knows the person really well and is really good at public speaking, you can probably leave that be as it is and just print a blank one unamended right but if your person isn't the best public speaker english isn't their first language or they're really emotional it may be helpful to go in and at least scratch out the wrong one you know it's like if it's brother slash sister and it's for a woman slash out the brother so you don't accidentally say that you know those appear a bunch of places to the document so again it may be easier to have one ready that all for men and one all for women and you could just pencil in the name and then you could change the name later but leave one for he and one for she maybe even have like a blue symbol on the cover and a pink symbol on the other so as a minister you could grab the correct one and not worry about that i think only the minister has to say those sorts of things so only they would need to have that copy you could have a generic set of copies that you give out um if you're comfortable with giving handouts i know not everybody is right now but you could have like a stash of them that you keep somewhere in emergencies. You pull them out and could take them to the wake service. Um, let's see. Now this is again a model one because you're going to get to places where it says, hold on. Oh, I'll point this out while I'm here. This, if you're using this book and everybody's just using their copy of the book, the all, the things that everybody say are in bold in the book. So that's why this can be handy for your members to all have. Let's see. The gospel reading, a short period of quiet reflection follows the response. And then a second reader, perhaps the leader of the song, reads a gospel passage, possibly Matthew 5, 1 through 12, all stand for the gospel reading. So you have a variety of scriptures that you could use they suggest one that is the one that's in the model service that i have online but you can come in here and if we go back to appendix one that is page 53 there's actually a number of scripture readings that are here it is a little awkward i'm not sure why the ritual book chose this but the ritual book chose the jerusalem translation of the bible for um the the text but i guess that you could use any one you want again worrying about copyright regulations if you were going to be reproducing this or putting it on the web as a model service 
then you're going to need to be aware of copyright restrictions. Um, I'm probably going to use, may go in and use the Dewey Rhymes version because that is copyright free. It's in the public domain. So there are a number of those here. They are all typed out. So you're good here typing them out. Um, again, I don't know about copyrights for the Jerusalem Bible. I imagine they had permission here. Again, if your reader has this book, they are probably okay just reading from the book. They could, you know, the general group could read from here. You could read from here. If it gets really confusing though, print out that PDF. Um, it even has responsorial psalms, verse before the gospel. It has gospels. Then as well, remember we had that reading um, from the major life by of St. Francis by St. Bonaventure. There's other secular Francis secular Franciscan. There's other Franciscan readings back here that you could choose from various places. Um, unconfirmed rule of 1221, letter to all the faithful, Siena Testament, salutation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There's a number of these here. Um, and then the back then, if you needed them, there's prayers of St. Francis are back here as well. So that's why you would need or want to grab this book. Going back to the wake service. Let's see here. It does have the hymn. It says, where was the hymn? Nope. <laughs> I thought it was there. Uh, the fraternity sings a suitable hymn, perhaps the peace prayer in one of its forms. Following the hymn, all are seated. But notice it says, perhaps the peace prayer in one of its forms. So you don't have to do that one. I, I put in my booklet, I put all creatures of my God and King but that is a little redundant because we practice, I think we pray the canticle already. So that's a little awkward. <laughs> um, Cause do we do that at some point? Let me see here. Yes. Um, it's in here. Interesting. It's not, it's not labeled. It says all praise be yours, my Lord through sister death from whose escape no mortal can embrace. And then we repeat that. That's going to be our refrain for this. Most high, all powerful, all good Lord, all praise is yours, all glory, all honor, and all blessing to you alone. Most high do they belong. No mortal lips are worthy to pronounce your name. All praise be yours, my Lord, through sister death, from whose embrace no mortal can escape. All praise be yours, my Lord, through all you have made. And first, my Lord, brother, son, who brings the day and light you give us through him. How beautiful he is, how radiant in all his splendor. Of you, most high, he bears the likeness. All praise be yours, my Lord, through sister death, from whose embrace no mortal can escape. And we go through the canticle bit by bit. So I may have to pick a different hymn. That's awkward that I picked that one. <laughs> but maybe not. I do love that hymn. So you go through. Um, again, this is a model wake service. You don't have to use this one. But it should, whatever your fraternity is using, I would suggest if you're making your booklet, it be something like that. It shouldn't be a shock to them when they show up. Um, so things I did, um, this is the cover on the PDF one. And I love it and don't love it at the same time because this is really about suffering. This painting, I think it's by Carvaccio. Um, on one hand, it's really dark. If you do a lighter edition, I think I needed to lighten it. Brother Leo should be over here. This is actually the image of St. Francis receiving the stigmata from the seraph. So it's about suffering and being Christ-like. I don't think I'm going to put that on mine. For the person that I printed it out for, it works. Mm, I don't think I'm gonna be that presumptuous. So I'm probably gonna grab a different picture. I also added in the personalized one I did with my name and all, all my female pronouns. I added the, the little painting here of St. Francis when he formed the order. I also added, because there's the part of the ceremony where we put the rule book in the hand of the deceased. And so I added a picture of what that rule book would be. I may go look for that in color, um, just so that people would know that that's red. So if they see you going up with a little red book, they'll know what that is. Um, Anything else? This one really needs the margins fixed. So this one I did go through and I justified the edges. Um, I need to make smaller margins so this isn't so big. And yes, you can print in booklet form out of Microsoft Word as well as PDFs. Um, other things that I did. Other things I, did. Um, I don't know what else did I do to this. I changed, oh, I changed the font. I went with, I think, Calibri 
just because it's a better font for dyslexics and it doesn't look as um, people think that Comic Sans, which is really good for people with reading disabilities, but it looks a little childlike and some people are offended by that. So I find Calibri to be a nice, happy medium. Um, yeah, so I justified the edges. I personalized all the, the she's, hers, and I put my name in any spot there should be a name. So I may go ahead and add then. I'm considering this is uh, the brother of one of my friends. We had prayed for him at one point. And this is the big booklet. Look, she had a big booklet for his. This is, I just have the little like sideways done book. They legit use the big one. And the print in here, let me see if I can find a page that I can show you. Yes, the print in here is super easy to read. It's really big. And so I don't quite want it that big. <laughs> And the pages, this was stapled instead of being numbered. I'm probably just going to number. I'm not going to assume they're going to staple it. Um, but it did have it did have all the readings written out, which was nice because not everybody's going to have a Bible there or a translation or know the same translation. So it's nice to have those all written out um, and what to do with things. Like if you're going to have the right of peace, what what does that mean? You may want to include some parenthetical things. Like on the Eucharistic prayer, it says in parentheses, please kneel or be seated if unable to kneel or stand. So it gives you some hints because not everybody coming, of course, will probably be Catholic. And so you may want to put in some things like that. So I'm considering making that into one, one entire booklet for me so that when I die, people can just grab one document and copy it and go. So hopefully it will have... Um, the Francis, I would like, this is what I would like to have. This is my dream one. I've been working on it while I'm trying to do these videos and catch up on closed captioning. I would like to have how to pray the rosary, the Franciscan wake service, the funeral service. If there's a graveside service, I'm going to try and include that. And then on the back cover, probably the obituary and maybe a little picture of me. I don't know. <laughs> um, and so that it's an all-in-one booklet that people would just be grabbing one booklet and going. I feel a little guilty that it's not a generic booklet for each event, if that makes sense. Because I don't want to waste a lot. So I was thinking just one book that people take everywhere. The only problem in that is if people like only go to pray the rosary and take the whole book with them, then that's one less copy. But what a witness. They're going to have all those readings in it, the whole Franciscan service, how to pray the rosary. And so that booklet could be something that could be a witness as well as helping people pray for me <laughs> which i definitely need oh that's the funny part i went in here like i actually had a, a, a welcome what did i say a welcome to the franciscan wake service for deanna willis and ofs and thank you for praying for me <laughs> hoping to get a little bit of a, a laugh there um so like i say you can find resources these are probably going to be your main resources in writing up a wake service brochure. But like I say, there is a PDF of one that's editable that you can grab at the St. Margaret of Cortona Regional website. You can go and get that. You can make your own. If you'd like to see what I have when I'm done, um, well, I'm not going to put the whole thing up there because that would be a bit much. Um, you don't need all that personal info about me. But I may put something up there, like a, a model booklet that, that I'm recommending um, and that could be a reason. I know I said about the one using Times New Roman and it's not my favorite font. But all devices seem to have Times New Roman and some of the others everybody doesn't have. And if you're switching fonts around, that's how you end up with awkward things like hyphenated words at the end of the line and stuff. So that is a consideration. Remember, any artwork that you're including or any quotes, please make sure you have permission to use them. Images, what you're looking for, is if it's CC zero, that's Creative Commons zero, or if it's in the public domain, either way there, you should say what the picture is, who it's by, um, and where it resides, and hopefully a, a, maybe a date to go with it as well. You know, the title, who it's by, the date, where it is, and of in course include that it was from the public domain or a CC zero. And a lot of the major museums actually have online collections that are public domain that you are free to use that artwork. So feel free. Again, if it's a quote out of a book, make sure that you're using less than three lines. Um, normally they'll tell you in the beginning, 
the beginning of a book, it often says where it says all rights reserved. Hmm, this one just says all rights reserved. So a little tricky there. But a lot of them say that you can use like up to three lines or something like that. Except for in a book review, an awake service is not a book review, folks. Don't don't try and monkey around with that. But you could be, you might, if you plan in advance, you should be able to write from them and get permission. So you could do that ahead of time. Um, I think that's it. Remember, this is called, you may find it somewhere else, called The Last Great Kindness. If you were wondering if I use that, the title for the video. The Last Great Kindness is to have everything set up. Have your funeral arrangements made. Have a will and testament made. Have your programs made. Have your, if you're a secular Franciscan and you would like to be buried in a habit, order it ahead of time order it ahead of time. Don't leave that to your grieving family to try and figure out. I did make a notebook with all these notes in it, if you remember that video. Um, <laughs> but it has like a phone number and a web address. What if those change over time? And what if there's not time to get them? Yeah, that's awkward. I just need to order one and order something big. Don't necessarily go by your measurements. There is, I know a lady in Florida right now that who's making them. I'll try and put that in the description to your measurements, but it's an act of humility, folks. And also most funeral homes are gonna slice it up the back. So go ahead and get something that's bigger than you need. Don't worry about it. Um, I know in mine, my sleeves are probably gonna be too short. It's either gonna be too short or too long, whatever. They fix that at the funeral home. I'm not gonna be freaking out about that. If you're really worried about my fashion sense in the coffin, we've got other issues, except for don't put people in dark blue dresses with white polka dots. Love you. Love you, Aunt Margie. But you scared me to death in that outfit. I thought you were going to pop out of the casket. God bless her soul. Um, <laughs> the children. There was another child. We went and hid it in the hallway because that dress was a bit too dynamic <laughs> for us. Um, so that's it. Try and get things lined up as far in advance as you can as a kindness. And you're going to want to put it in multiple places. So put it in a folder in your safe um, get a safe if you don't have one. You, they're easy to keep in the house. They're usually fireproof. Keep your documents safe. Um, as well, you could get a, a security box at the bank. They're like $5 a year. You can afford that. And then if you move, your house burns, whatever, it's safe in the bank and people can go to get the copies there. You could leave it with a loved one. You know, have it in multiple places so it's quick and easy for, for grieving people to get. That's all. Um, wait, let's see if we can pray something from the wake service. I'm just going to grab something here. <laughs> Page not of mine. No, no, no. Okay, fine. I'll get one from the book so that we can all do it together. We'll say a little bit of this here. We're just going to pray for all the deceased. We're going to start this prayer doesn't actually say where it comes from. This is on page 184. I've gotten permission from them before for these videos, so we're going to go ahead and wing this here. And then I moved it. These are our intercessions. We're just going to pray in general for the dead and all of our fraternities and families. The Lord Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even if they die, will live in every living sorry, and every yeah, every living person who puts faith in me will never suffer eternal death. Let us pray to him for our brothers and sisters. Lord Jesus, you raise those who sleep in death to life. Give our brothers and sisters life eternal. Lord, have mercy. You washed our brothers and sisters clean in the waters of baptism and sealed them with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Bring them to a place of light and refreshment in your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Our brothers and sisters were fed with your body and blood. May they find a place at the table with you at the heavenly banquet. Lord, have mercy. Hey friends, okay, I'm going to stop there because right there, I'm going to get permission from them to make a video that's going to be, let's use this. Let's use this how we pray for our brothers and sisters in our fraternities who have gone before us. Um, this is going to be a lovely idea. I'm going to work on developing that with the Secular Franciscan Companion Publisher. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump out there. In the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, great and glorious God. 
Give us right faith, certain hope, perfect knowledge, sense, and charity, Lord, that we may know and do your holy will. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, friends. God bless you. And don't forget that last great kindness. Get out there and do it. I know it's hard. I know it's awkward to type in your name as the person who's died. Just do it. It is humbling. It is scary. It is a lot of things. But use it as a moment to go into the practice of memento mori. Remember your death is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Is your soul ready? Let's get there, friends. We can do it together. Let's pray for each other every day. We're going to work on that prayer. Um, And God bless you, friends. Bye.